مِنَ يَا رَبَّ اللهم علمنا ما ينفعنا وانفعنا بما علمتنا وزدنا علما وأرنا الحق حقا وارزقنا اتباعه وأرنا الباطل باطلا وارزقنا اجتنابه وجعلنا ممن يستمعون القول ويتبعون أحسنه وادخلنا برحمتك في عبادك الصالحين وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله ولي الصالحين وأشهد أن محمدا عبده وحبيبه ورسوله سيدي أبا القاسم يا رسول الله صلى عليك الله يعلم الهدى وأشهد أنك بلغت الرسالة وأديت الأمانة ونصحت الأمة وكشفت الغمة وجاهت لله حق جهاده عباد الله يقول الله تبارك وتعالى في محكم تنزيله يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والأرحام إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسولا فقد فاز فوزا عظيما أما بعد فإن أصدق الحديث كتاب الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار My dear brothers and respected sisters in Islam I greet you all with Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh All praise is due to Allah We bear witness and we testify that there, there is no deity worthy of worship except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we bear witness and we testify that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is his messenger and his slave. All salawats and salams be upon our Prophet, upon his noble family, his righteous companions, and all those who follow his path till the last day. My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, inshallah today we'll talk yet for another very important topic, and that is backbiting and gossip. If you remember last week, we talked about this very important topic, and that was envy and jealousy. How envy and jealousy destroys our good deeds. And I chose these topics just before Ramadan for a reason, my dear brothers and sisters. Because I see a lot of us, even during the holy month of Ramadan, it's very difficult for a lot of us to get rid of these bad habits especially when it comes to envy and jealousy, especially when it comes to gossip and backbite. And you remember what our Prophet ﷺ told us when it comes to the holy month of Ramadan. If you're not able to stay away from vain and foul language, you have fasted and there is no rewards. Even though during summer we would stay away from food and water for so many hours, but at the same time, we're not able to guard our tongue while we're fasting. So there's no rewards for that person. And that's why these topics that we are talking before the holy month of Ramadan are topics that I choose for a reason. So inshallah, all of us, we can prepare ourselves for the holy month of Ramadan and not to fall for these kind of sins and mistakes that a lot of people do without even knowing that what they're doing is gossip and what they're doing is backbite and what they're doing even they go beyond that which is considered to be namime slander and that is one of the major sins in Islam my dear brothers and sisters why backbite and gossip is so important because this is mentioned explicit in the Holy Quran so that shows how important this is my dear brothers and sisters. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told us and he said, number one, 
وَلَا تَجَسَّسُوا Number one is do not spy. What we do nowadays, because we don't like someone for, for some reason, all we do is we dig on internet and we try to find faults of other people, neglecting and not thinking of our own faults. Wallahi l'azim, if we focus on our own mistakes and faults, we won't have time to think of other people. But now, we want to find other people's faults. And you know what happened? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, if you are that kind of person that tries to find other people's faults, Allah will find your faults and Allah will expose you in front of everyone. As our Prophet ﷺ told us, he said, even the things that you have done within your house, very intimate things, Allah will expose the true face of you. Why? Only because you're trying to find the faults of other people. And nor backbite one another. Now, even our Prophet ﷺ, he mentioned very directly, he said a person who gossips about his brother or his sister will not enter Jannah. Now, I know a lot of you are wondering, what does this gossip and backbite mean according to our faith Islam? Let me tell you, but before I mention that, I want to remind myself and you all the verse of, of the Holy Quran All of us, we have to hold fast to the rope of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is the only way to keep us united, to love one another for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. How many issues we have in our community nowadays how many division, how many fractions, how many sects, how many all these things within Muslim community because of backbiting and because of gossip. Now, Prophet ﷺ, to clarify it for every single one of us, he asked his companions, what do you think gossip is? What do you think backbiting is? The companion said, Ya Rasulullah, Allah and the Prophet know better than anyone else. And then our Prophet ﷺ explained by saying, it is saying, when you say something about your brother or your sister, which he or she would dislike if she was they. You might say something about someone, he's not they, but if the, that person was they, he would get hurt of that statement that you said. That is considered to be backbite and gossip. Now the companions want to know even more. They said, Ya Rasulullah, what about what we say is true about that person? We are not lying. For instance, we say, uh, that happened to the wife of the Prophet ﷺ. She said about a lady that she is what? She is short. And that lady was short. And what, what, what did Prophet ﷺ said to her? This statement, if you were to put this in an ocean, it would change the color and odor of that ocean. How heavy that statement was. And you know what she said, Ya Rasulullah, all I said is true. She's actually short. And Prophet said, yes, but if she heard you, what you said about her, she would have disliked it. So the companion said, Ya Rasulullah, what about what we say is true? Or Prophet said, and remember this. If what you say about him or her is true, this is what is considered to be backbiting. Because what you say about that person is not true, that is not backbiting anymore. What is that? It's slandering the meme. It's a lie. So you're slandering about that person because what you're saying is not true. So backbite or gossip is when you say something which is true about your brother and sister, but if the person was present when you said that, he would have been hurt or disliked what you said about that person. Subhanallah. And when it comes to um, sayings in terms of hadith of the Prophet and that shows, and remember this is some, a principle, that I, a, a lesson to learn in Islam. 
when Allah talks about a topic in many places in the Quran, and we have so many hadiths about that topic, remember that that topic is very important in Islam. Prophet ﷺ, when it comes to backbiting and gossip, there are a lot of hadiths that talk about this topic. And one of the uh, hadiths of the Prophet ﷺ, Prophet Ali Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was with, uh, among some companions and one of the, the guy sitting with the Prophet, he was talking something bad about another companion. The other person, it wasn't there. And this guy, the companion, he wanted to go from that place. But before he go, Prophet Ali Sallallahu Alaihi wanted to teach him a lesson. You know what the Prophet said to him? He said, pick and clean your teeth before you go. He said, yes, Allah, what, what are you talking about? Clean my teeth. I didn't eat anything. I didn't eat anything. He said, no. You have eaten the flesh of your brother. By what? By doing what? By backbiting and gossiping about him. So clean your teeth before you go. And another occasion of Prophet Ali Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he was walking with some companions and this Prophet could hear two companions talking to each other about someone who actually was punished in Islam about adultery. And these guys were saying, you know, shame on him and you know he's bad and he's this and he's that. Prophet was just listening. But Prophet wants to find a, 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 a place and time, perfect time and place to teach them a lesson. As Prophet was walking with them and others, Prophet Ali Salam he saw a, a dead donkey, an animal, a carcass, you know, rotten carcass. And Prophet Ali Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he asked, were those two people that were talking about this particular person? They said, yeah, these are the, the ones. Prophet Ali Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, you know what he said? Get down and eat from the flesh of this donkey. They said, Ya Rasulullah, this thing is disgusting. You know, just the smell and just by the look of, uh, of that thing is, is disgusting, and let alone eating it. You know what Prophet said? Wallahi, what you said about your brother is worse than eating that rotten animal. You see how severe backbiting and gossip is, my dear brothers and sisters? That it's a, it's a social disease that majority of us, we find ourselves in a situation where there's a lot of gossip and a lot of backbite. And this is not all. Prophet Alaihi told us the punishment of those people, not just here, but in the hereafter. You know, Prophet Alaihi when he did Isra and Miraj, when he went to meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, there was an occasion where Prophet Alaihi he said, he passed by some people. He saw those people, they had copper nails. You know, nails, metal nails. And what they used to do, he said they were scratching their faces and their chests with them. Imagine metal, how severe you can scratch your face and your chest uh, with those nails. And he said, I asked Jibreel, alayhi salam, who are these people? He said, they are being punished because they used to eat people's flesh in their lives, i.e. used to backbite and insult other people. And this is the punishment that when we leave this dunya, whether in, in Barzakh or in the hereafter, those people will punish themselves because of what they've done in this dunya. And all they've done is they were not able to control their tongue. All they were doing is talking about other people. Wallahi, I have seen a lot of men, with all due respect, the way they talk about other people is, is like, you know, because women, with respect, they're known when it comes to talk, backbite, and gossip. But some men are worse than women. All they do is on the phone or social media, call this one, have you heard about that one? Call this one, have you heard about this one? So all they do is they're storytellers, and all they do is backbite and gossip about other people, fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, because the day will come. The day will come that you're going to be questioned and you're going to be accountable for everything that we have said, everything that we have uttered with our tongues. 
especially when it comes to backbite and gossip, my dear brothers and sisters. Now, I just want to mention a few things before we conclude. This is, I just want to mention number one, one hadith of the Prophet Ali Salatu This is very, very important. Now, I know that some of us, we have this bad habit. We have to try to control our tongue. How do we do that? Number one, if it does not concern you or your family, why you want to talk about it? Why? Number one, if the person comes to you and says, have you heard? Ask that person, were you the one that saw what happened or you've heard from other people? 99% of people that come to you, what they do? They have heard from other people. And number three, remember this. People that gossip, if they're your friends, in front of you they gossip about other people, remember that when you're not there, they're going to gossip about you. You understand? So people who fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, people who pray and do good things, you, can nev you cannot be friends with people like that unless you are like them. Otherwise, how can you sit down and listen to all the gossip that your friends are, are saying about others and either you try to say, hey, fear Allah, don't do this, or get away from that place, from that gathering, because that is not healthy at all. Or Prophet Ali Salaam told us and he said, whoever has wronged his brother or his sister with regard to his honor or anything else, let him seek his forgiveness today. Don't wait tomorrow. Don't wait after Ramadan. Don't wait for Eid day. Today because we don't know what's going to happen to us tomorrow. Before there will be no dinar nor dirham. And if he has any good deeds to his credit, they will be taken from him in a manner equal with the wrong he did. Wallahi, they will come on the day of judgment on your neck saying, oh Allah, this guy has wronged me and Allah will take your good deeds and giving it to those people. This is very, very important. But also, I want to mention something very important. What is not considered to be gossip or backbite? And this is very important. Number one, if someone has treated you unjustly, dhulm, has happened to you by someone and you go to an imam or you to go if you or, or if you go to a judge or someone and you tell that person what this person has done to you that is not gossip that is not backbiting because dhulm has done to you all you're doing is getting your rights back you understand so by sharing everything with an imam or a judge you're not doing that to backbite that person you're doing because that person has done harm and injustice to you. Number one. Number two, if you go to a, a person of knowledge and you seek fatwa about something, you say, okay, I want to know whether this is halal or haram or what is this because I saw a person doing this and doing this and doing this. You're not mentioning the person to put him down you're mentioning the case so you can learn for yourself. Because if you're in that position, is it good or not good? You understand? And that is also nothing wrong with that. Or it is very important, and this is, I want to advise you, my dear brothers and sisters, because it happened to me. If someone would come to you, a father or a, a, a young boy, he's about to get married to this particular girl or that family, and they come and ask you for the sake of Allah, do you know this girl? Do you know this family? You cannot say, no, no, uh, you know, no, no, you have to tell them the truth. And if you do, you're not backbiting or gossiping about them. You're trying to save this girl or this boy or this family. <coughs> well, that happened to me because sometimes I try to help the young ones getting married. You know, before it happened, all they were saying is good things. And after it happened, all the bad things I found out about that, that particular person or family, I said, but why didn't tell me before? Ah, you know, we didn't want to, you know, interfere. Yeah, but you, you, you're ruining someone's lives. 
You understand? So if you don't want to talk, say no. But if they come and ask you for the sake of Allah, don't say that I don't want to backbite about them or gossip because that's not gossip or backbite. You're not trying to put them down, but you're trying to help someone, my dear brothers and sisters. And also, it is very, very important if someone is blind or is deaf, you know, you know someone who is with, you know, a handicapped or whatever, by mentioning him or by mentioning what he is with, with sincere intention, you're not backbiting about that person. If you say, I saw a deaf person, he couldn't hear what, what I was saying, you're not putting him down, you're just explaining what he is, or a blind person, do you understand? Unless if you want to imitate and all that, that's completely another thing. Now, if you have backbited or gossiped about someone, what should we do? And this is the conclusion of today's talk, which majority of us, may Allah protect us and may Allah uh, 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 forgive us, Ya Rabbil Alameen. If you or me have gossiped or backbited about someone, but the backbite and gossip hasn't reached the person, he doesn't know that you backbited and gossiped about that person, that sin is between you and Allah. That sin is between you and Allah. You have to turn to Allah and say, Oh Allah, I have talked, I have gossiped and backbite about this person. Please forgive me. Please don't go to the person and say, I insulted you, I did this. Because maybe he had good thoughts about you. If you mention, I've done this and this and this, it's too late for, to ask for forgiveness. If it, if, it, if it hasn't reached him, what you have said about that person is between you and Allah. Now, what you can do, if he doesn't know, is the same way that you backbited about him and gossiped about him, now make dua for that person and talk good about that person. Same way that you talk bad about him. You understand? But if what you have said has reached the person and he knows what you have done and what you have said, that is not just between you and Allah anymore. Number one, you have to turn to Allah in repentance so you will never repeat gossip and backbite again, but also you have to go to that person and say, please, you know, I didn't know it was this severe. I know, uh, you know, I'm just weak. I said this, or you know what I said. You understand? Please forgive me for the sake of Allah. But if he doesn't know, don't go and, and, and open up and what you have said or done to him because this will cause more harm than good. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us of those that we are able to guard our tongues, and especially during the holy month of Ramadan, Ya Rabbil Alameen. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that if we ever gossiped or backbited about anyone and they don't know, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive all of us, Ya Rabbil Alameen. And if we have done anything or said anything to someone that they, they to hurt their feelings and they know, we ask them for the sake of Allah to forgive us, Ya Rabbil Alameen. Oh Allah, make us of those that you're pleased with us in this world and the next, Ya Rabbil Alameen. Make us of those that we love, we respect, we advise each other only for your sake, Ya Rabbil Alameen. Make us of those that we are able to feed ourselves and our families with halal and to stay away from haram, Ya Rabbil Alameen. Make us of those who will drink from the howd of the Prophet on the day of judgment, Ya Rabbil Alameen. And make us of those who will be the neighbors of the Prophet, Ali Salatu Salam, in Jannah, Ya Rabbil Alameen. آمين آمين وقول قول هذا واستغفر الله لي ولكم فاستغفره سيستغفر الله إنه هو الغفور الرحيم